Hello, today I'm going to show you how to use the Language.io app to translate a ticket inside of Zendesk support. The scenario that I'll be walking you through is an English speaking support agent who needs to respond to a Spanish ticket. And to begin with, I'll just go ahead and open a Spanish ticket that has not yet been responded to. So as we can see, the this ticket comes from Fausto. The text is in Spanish and as an English only support agent, I'm not sure how to reply to this. The way it works is that when Language.io is installed, you're going to see this little box down here at the bottom, ticket translation by Language.io. And when you click on that, it is going to show you the subject and the main body of Fausto's support request and both are translatable. But before we translate them, let me show you a few problematic pieces of Fausto's request. So as is the case with lots of messy conversational chat and email content, this request is full of misspellings and problematic terms such as abbreviations and um, slang or nicknames. In this case, Fausto is trying to place a bet on Rafael Nadal in the French Open. He is using the term RG, which is short for Roland Garros, which in the United States we refer to as the French Open. Um, Fausto is also using the term Rafa, which is a nickname for Rafael Nadal. Rafa and RG will not be accurately translated by general machine translation engines such as Google or Microsoft because they don't have the context. They don't know the Fausto is talking about Rafael Nadal or the French Open. Furthermore, Fausto's request has some misspellings. So anybody watching this who speaks Spanish will see that Fausto misspelled the term ganador as ganafor, which stands for winner in Spanish. And further, Fausto misspelled last or latest. It should be ultima. It came in as iltima. Um, dafo is a misspelling of dado or given. And most general engines won't know what these stand for because they're misspelled words. Language IO, however, has been configured to properly handle these misspelled words. And also we've configured this account that I'm using on the Language IO side with a glossary of terms. And that glossary knows that RG should be translated into the French open when we're translating from Spanish into English. That glossary also informs our engine that Rafa should be translated into English as Rafael Nadal. And it's also going to pick the best possible engine or machine translation engine for English Spanish translations to ensure best fluency in translation. So let's go ahead and get started with the translation process. Again, we're gonna click on this little box. We see everything that's translatable in this ticket. I will go ahead and translate the subject by clicking on that translate button next to it. And it's gonna push a translation of the subject. Notice that we're accurately translating the Rafa nickname into Rafael Nadal and the RG acronym into French Open. So this is a great translation. Next, we will go ahead and translate the main body of Fausto's question. One thing I'd like to point out is you can expand these into larger windows to see the full Spanish all at once if you need to. We can also, in this view, select either machine or human translation of Fausto's incoming question. In the interest of time, I'll go ahead and translate it by a machine. So again, that Spanish content hits our server. The server accurately translates all of this problematic messy user-generated content accurately into English so the agent understands what Fausto is actually asking. Now this is a great translation. Hello, I've redeemed the promo code for the winner of the French Open with Rafael Nadal and you haven't given me the last free. Can you help me? Now if this were a bad translation, notice that in our widget we provide a retranslate option. So if you don't like the initial machine translation and what, what happens in this process is our server looks at all of our integrated engines, picks the best one for English to Spanish translations. But there are many engines that we're integrated into. So when the support agent clicks on retranslate, the server is going to understand that you didn't like the first translation, and it's going to hit a second engine and get a slightly different translation. Now, once you understand what Fausto is asking, you can go ahead and reply. So you can reply in a variety of different ways to optimize efficiency and translation quality. Generally speaking, you're gonna kick it off with some unique greeting such as, hello, Fausto. 
I'd be happy to help you. But let's say that you answer questions like this all day long and you already have a pre-translated macro in Spanish ready to plug in here so you don't have to translate and pay to translate the same answer over and over again. So all we're going to translate right now is a unique greeting and a little bit of a unique message. So please follow the instructions I'm providing below and let me know if that solved your problem. So this part is in English, so it needs to be translated. Later, we're going to paste a pre Spanish translated macro below this. But let's go ahead and translate the piece that we need translated first. So we're gonna pop up our widget again. Anything that's in this editor right here is going to display in the current text row. Again, we can pop it out into a larger window. And again, we're going to see the option to either machine or human translate our response. Now, if we just put hours or a lot of time into crafting our English response, and it's for a very important customer, and you don't want to trust the translation to a machine translation engine, the agent can always elect a human translation. If we leave human selected and click on translate, this text is going to go to the Language.io server. Language.io will push it in front of a linguist focused on rapid turnaround human translation. On average, this will turn around in about half an hour. For Spanish, it's often faster, depends on the language, and um, we're good to go. In the interest of time, I'm just going to select machine, click on translate, it's going to hit our server. The server is going to push the Spanish translation right here back into the editor. As you can see, it's right here. Further, we've got this autoresponder that was pasted to the bottom, letting Fausto know that in the interest of responding as quickly as possible, we've used a machine translation. Let us know if there are any quality problems with this translation. What we found at Language.io is that when we're upfront with a customer, letting them know that we're machine translating our responses to them just so we can respond as quickly as possible. They're more forgiving of machine translation error. Now, the Language.io machine translation engines are the best that exist in the world. So you're going to get the best possible machine translation quality from Language.io. That said, machine translation is not yet as good as human translation. And so we like to let folks know. We find that they're more forgiving when we let them know ahead of time. Now, like I said before, we also have the option to pull in a pre-translated macro. So let's say that the problem that, that Fausto faces is that he's got duplicate accounts. And if we just combine these two accounts, problem will be solved. And we're asking if that's what he wants us to do. So there's that pre-translated macro. We've got our unique custom greeting translated, and we've got the autoresponder at the bottom. So we are ready to send the Spanish email out to Fausto. We simply click submit as new and problem solved. Please reach out to us at languageio.com if you have additional questions about our product.